Hey guys, today is a very special video. I'm going to be showing you my entire process on how I make my handmade soap. And today it's going to be our super popular French lavender soap. I feel like so many people love lavender. It's such a classic soap scent. It's fresh, it's clean, it's soothing. Oh, I know I love it. It's one of those scents that you just gotta have on your line. So the first thing I do is mix my water and lye together and put that aside so I can have that cool down, which for me takes about two hours. I did that off camera. And then the next thing I do is I measure out my hard oil so I can get that to start melting down. Every soap maker has their ritual, and for me, I always start with coconut oil. I get my coconut oil from New Directions Aromatics, but this ingredient is so common, you can actually get it from your local grocery store. Um, and for this recipe, I use 495 grams. Next up is shea butter. I use 450 grams in my recipe. This ingredient might be a little bit trickier to find, but if you check out some soap suppliers, they're sure to have it. I have my supplier linked up in the description below. So these two oils need to be melted carefully and slowly. I place them in a water bath on my stovetop with a heat set at medium. While those two melt down, I continue to measure out the rest of my oils. In my recipe, I use olive oil, organic, unrefined hemp seed oil, and castor oil. I use quite a bit of olive oil in my recipe, 1,013 grams. Olive oil adds a really nice hardness to soap, which is why I love using it. And I get my olive oil from Costco. Anyone else love Costco for their soap making ingredients? I used to get my coconut oil from there. But then they discontinued the organic three pound tubes, which is so sad. And next up is castor oil. I use 113 grams in my recipe. Castor oil is fantastic for increasing bubbles in your soap. See how sticky it is? Because of that, you don't want to use too much in your recipe and you don't really need that much. I remember reading about castor oil in books, like when kids would get sick. It's what parents gave them to feel better. It's, is that still a thing? Then we have our star ingredient, organic unrefined hemp seed oil. We are so lucky to have a hemp seed farm nearby, so we actually buy our hemp seed oil locally from them. Link to their website is in the description box below. Bit of a story time here. We were requested to add hemp seed oil to one of our soaps by a local business that wanted us to wholesale to them about two years ago. So we did that. And then once we felt the difference between that soap we made for them and our original soaps, we rebranded and changed our entire business to focus on hemp seed oil. It was that amazing. We use long wooden molds to pour our soaps into. And to use them, we have to line them with parchment paper. To line them with parchment paper, takes a bit of origami-like folding skills, but once you get the hang of it, it gets way easier. I learned how to do this from a video on YouTube.
I then secure the pipe print down with thumbtacks. It works super well this way. Then I prepare my other ingredients like my fragrance oils, colorants, and soap embellishments. Since it's a lavender soap, I use my French lavender fragrance oil, purple mica for the purple swirls, and lavender buds to sprinkle on top. I use a tiny bit of titanium dioxide for a white swirl, so I need to disperse it in a light oil. In my case, I use my hemp seed oil to disperse it in. This titanium dioxide is oil soluble. I know that you can get a water soluble titanium dioxide, but I've only ever used the oil soluble one and it's worked pretty well for me. So I have everything prepared and ready to go for when my lye is fully cooled. I cool my solution down to below 110 degrees Fahrenheit. At this point, I usually have an hour and a half before it's ready to go, so I use this time to do something else. I think for this time I went and wrapped some bath bombs. So it's been two hours since I poured the lye and it's cooled down. Um, so now all that's left to do is to mix that lye with the oils and then get that soap into the mold. So I'll show you guys how that's done. At this point, I add four teaspoons of kaolin clay to my oils. Kaolin clay is awesome in soap for adding a bit of a slippery and silky feel. It also helps anchor your fragrance into the soap to make it last a lot longer. I forgot to mention that I'm actually making a double batch of lavender soap, so I'm splitting my lye water solution into two here. And now we add the lye to the oils. This is where the magic happens. I then take my stick blender and blend the lye water solution and oils together. What the blender is doing is emulsifying the ingredients so that they bind to one another completely. This chemical reaction is called saponification and is actually how soap is made. I stick blend until the mixture, which I'll now call soap batter, is emulsified, meaning I don't see any more oil streaks in it. Then I will pour about half of the soap batter into another container. This soap batter will be the base color of my lavender soap. I then pour about half of the measured fragrance oil into this container. Then I stick blend some more. I will stick blend this soap batter until it starts to leave an outline when I raise the blender out of the batter. And this is actually called trace. See how fluid this batter still is? I will need to stick blend quite a bit to get to the level of trace that I personally like. How fast a soap thickens or trace will depend largely on the fragrance oil that you use. For this particular fragrance oil, it thickens the soap slowly, so I have a lot of time. I have actually worked with fragrance oils that thickened up instantly, and believe me, nobody wants that. It's a mess. And this is the level of trace that I like. You can just barely see the outline of the blender when I raise it. And now it's time to pour. I pour the base color right into my mold. And this is the batter that I will be pouring my other colors into in just a moment. So I don't know if you noticed, but 
I added no colorants to this base color. It ends up being a soft off-white color that works beautifully in my lavender soap. I make sure to scrape as much of the soap out as I can. The less soap you have in the container, the less soap you gotta clean up, am I right? And now, finally, it's time for the exciting bit, adding some colored swirls. <laughs> this is honestly the best part. If you've stuck around this long, I commend you. You'll now be rewarded with some really satisfying soap pours. I'll pour the rest of this fragrance oil into the remaining batter. And after giving it a quick stir, I pour this soap into my vessels. Today, we will be using a light purple, a sophisticated grayish purple, and a white. Look how nicely this fragrance oil is behaving. Trust me, I'm usually not this calm at this stage. I'm usually running around chaotically like a chicken with its head cut off, trying to pour soap into the mold before it solidifies on me. Oh yes, that's happened, and it's not fun. And then I add a bit of mica to the light purple container, some purple ultramarines to the grayish purple container, and my diluted titanium dioxide to the last container. And like the base color, I stick blend these colors until the soap batter has thickened to the trace I like. When I pour the colors, I simply go from one end of the mold to the other. Just a few lines, nothing crazy, nothing too complicated. I literally just go back and forth. I use about half of each color for this first layer of swirls. Then I take my skewer and starting from one end of the mold, working my way to the other end, I will make, I guess you can call them heart shapes. This creates an interesting swirl when it's cut. Then I pour the second layer of swirls. I will pour the remainder of the containers for this layer and do another go around with my skewer. And I just realized it's actually more like a figure eight motion rather than a heart when I make the swirl. You can see it's really starting to thicken up here. It's still super manageable and I'm not panicked at all. I actually really like the rate at which this fragrance oil thickens my batter. At this stage, I'm hoping for the consistency to be more like a thick cream and you'll see why in a minute. And this last layer is what I call the scrapes, because it's literally just me getting every last bit of soap batter into this mold. 
I do not like waste and I hate cleaning up soap even more. So the more I clean out these containers, the less I have to clean off of them and the more soap my customers get. Win-win. Now I add some fun texture to my soaps by using a spoon to make these cool ridges. I just go up and down both sides of the soap until it's all ridged up. So I save the last bit of white soap batter to form my company's signature ice cream textured tops. By this point, it's getting super solid and I'm actually able to spoon the soap out like it's legit thick cream. I then use my skewer to carve out swirls. I use quick motions to swirl the white soap with the purple and it makes these fun swirlies that look so much like ice cream and it's what my company is known for. I actually do this twice to get as much of a textured swirled peak as possible. Like last time, I will make ridges with a spoon on both sides and then scoop out blobs of the white soap along the top. I'll now add a sprinkling of lavender buds for decoration. Notice how little I actually use. <laughs> I'm not a big fan of using a lot of botanicals on a soap as I own a home and I don't like a lot of unmeltable stuff going down my drain. So I figure my customers are the same. And you don't need a whole lot to get that impact. Look how pretty this looks. I'm a huge fan of this soap, how it looks, how it smells how well the fragrance oil behaves. <laughs> Making this soap, this lavender soap, is always a 10 out of 10 experience for me and our house always smells amazing afterwards. Hello, so it's now the next day and we are going to be cutting the loaves of French lavender soap that I made yesterday. As you can see, the soap has solidified, or should I say saponified beautifully, and it's now ready to be cut.
I use my single bar cutter to cut all of my soaps. I could get a multi bar cutter, but I like this guy because I still like looking at every individual bar for its unique design. And also I like to customize the size of the bar every now and then. So this single bar cutter serves me well for now. Anyone else think their soap loaves look like delicious edible pastries? I love how beautiful they look. I just line up the soap and cut off a sliver from the end piece, then I get right to cutting. You can see here how well the swirls turned out using that figure 8 motion of my skewer. The different shades of purple look so beautiful and soothing. This is the perfect design for lavender soap, I think. And that's it! That's my entire process from beginning to end. If you stuck around till the end of this video, you are a trooper. <laughs> and thank you so much for watching. I really hope you guys learned a lot and were entertained by this type of video. If you were, don't forget to like this video, subscribe to my channel, and turn on that notification bell. I'm really challenging myself to post a video daily. That's right daily. So don't miss out on future videos by subscribing to my channel. Thanks again and keep being awesome. Bye guys!